Historic Preservation Board and Design Review Committee. The board and committee meet monthly to review proposals for changes to properties located within the city's seven historic districts and buildings designated at, uh, as local landmarks, as well as to conduct other historic preservation related business consistent with Article 11 of the Land Development Code. The board is made up of Lakeland citizens appointed by the city commission and is assisted by staff of the community and economic development department and the city attorney's office. The first meeting comprises the historic preservation board agenda where business of the board is handled, including recommendations of new historic designations. The second meeting uh, consists of the design review committee agenda and involves acting on recommendations from staff regarding certificate of review applications for major work proposed to properties within the historic districts or local landmark buildings. The design review committee is a standing subcommittee of the historic preservation board. Public input is welcomed for items on the design review committee's agenda and we invite everyone who wishes to participate to be heard. We ask that all speakers come up to the, um, either the, the podium over here or the central table, um, state their name and address for the record and be concise in their comments. Thank you for your interest and participation and please silence all mobile devices at this time. And with that, I will turn the meeting over to our uh, chair, Mr. Christopher Olson. Thank you, Emily. Let's call to order the meeting, May 25th, 2023, with the Historic Preservation Board. Let's take a roll call and determine a quorum. Christopher Olson, I'm here. Melinda Rinker. Here. Bruce Anderson. Lynn Dennis. Here. Landis Fleming. Here. Natalie Oldenkamp. Here. Cesar Perez. Here. Michael Porter. Here. And Brittany Wilson. We do have a quorum. All right. Uh, we need to review and approve meeting minutes from last month. Any discussion or questions? Move for approval. Second. Last month are approved. Old business. Reminder, the Lakeland Historic District Resurvey Project Phase 1 Results and Recommendation Workshop to be held immediately following the June 22nd, um, 2023 Historic Preservation Board and Design Review Committee. Thank you. New business. Well, before we jump into that, I just yes. want to at least uh, point out that uh, we're st our office is still reviewing this legislation, but there was a bill that was passed this legislative session, uh, Senate Bill 250, that might uh, complicate our ability to implement some changes uh, as it relates to this. Um, and so we're still working through the consequences of how that would impact us. Um, and so there, there's a bit of a, I, I would say, uh, or a little bit of interpretation that's going to have to go into this to figure out what's going on with it. Uh, but any impact, it's related to Hurricane Ian and Hurricane Nicole and being within a certain zone of 100 miles of landfall. And so uh, any municipality or local government that has any kind of development order or changes to their land regulations, those are going to be put on hold until about June, 20, uh, June 2025. And so with that, it would be difficult for us to implement any changes. So we're still trying to figure out whether this applies to us and it's still got to get signed by the governor. And so, you know, we still can go forward with that process in June. Um, but whether it gets implemented this year or in 2025, uh, it remains to be seen. But our office is still kind of determining the legal consequences of that. And Alex, you'll workshop in June? Yes. Yeah, so by then that. we should have some pretty good, uh, a little bit more of a under understanding of the impact of it. Perfect, thank you. And what was that bill number again? SB 250. 250, okay. And it's in section 14, and so it's, uh, it's part of the legislation, but it's not changing any statutes or anything like that, so it's a general law. Thank you. All right, new business recognition of May as Historic Preservation Month. I wanted to report on um, the Preservation Month activities. So some of you participated in the proclamation on May 15th at um, the City Commission meeting. So thank you for those of you who did attend. Um, let's see, this past Monday, we celebrated uh, the 2023 Preservation Awards. 
um, which was really nice, and I know a lot of you attended that as well. Um, that was a, a really fun event, and um, we recognized uh, Contractor of the Year, Daniel Sherritt, and Lifetime Achievement Award went to Lois Shrouse Murphy for her work um, with the Kathleen community. So it was a really good event. Um, also, uh, I presented along with Luann Mems at the Florida Historical Society uh, Conference um, on the 18th, um, and that was presenting the history and historic places of Lakeland. So that was a really good presentation. Um, and Luann and I will actually be um, hosting our house history workshop at the library on the 31st of this month. So round out the, the month with a workshop and um, happy Historic Preservation Month. <laughs> what time? It's at 5.30. Yep. Okay, thank you, Emily. <clears throat> also, the Historic Preservation Board annual review has been postponed to the June 22nd meeting. Nothing we bad. want to apologize for that. I ran out of time. So, um, and I know we're missing a member today, so that'll be good that we hold it in June. Anything else? Any new business anyone wants to introduce? All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Okay. I would like to call together the Design Review Committee meeting and uh, first uh, call to order <coughs> in roll. Uh, myself, Melinda Rinker here, Chris Olson here, Lynn Dennis here, Landis Fleming here, Natalie Oldenkamp here, Cesar Perez here, Michael Porter here. Okay, we are all here and we have a quorum. <coughs> Are there any um, corrections or additions that need to be done for the minutes? And if not, sign. I will motion that we accept them. Second. Okay. All in favor of the adoption of the April 27, 2023 Design Review Committee meeting minutes as presented, say aye. 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 All opposed? Oh, I, by the way. <laughs> okay, uh, those have been approved. Next is reviewing the certificates of review that were administratively approved between April 14th and May 10th. And that starts on page 10 of our thing here. I'll give you a minute to make sure that we've reviewed those and uh, have a moment to Emily, it looks like a lot of Park Hill applications again. Very popular street for activity, <laughs> you know. And if there's any questions on that, go ahead and ask or a motion to approve we don't need a motion oh we don't need a motion that's no, right that's for review all right okay next will be the public hearing portion of the meeting and uh the committee is ready to consider the certificate or after we've done that part um we need to ask the city attorney assistant city attorney to um administer the oath for the all who wish to testify today Good morning, everyone. If you're planning to speak before the Design Review Committee, we'd ask at this time if you could please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Our first case is HPB 23 092, 538 Hunter Street. Final approval is requested for the construction of a gabled overhang onto the front porch of the house on the subject property. Owner applicant is Ms. Kate Shaw. Are there any conflicts of interest among the committee members? No. Okay. Uh, Emily, would you read the staff report and recommendations then, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. 
The subject property consists of two platted lots with a total area of 0.33 acres. The subject property contains a two-story frame vernacular house built circa 1925, which is a non-contributing building in the Dixieland Historic District. The house features a gabled roof with a shed roofed front porch, which has been screened in. Although the construction date of this house makes it eligible for historic designation, several alterations, including replacement siding and windows, um, likely resulted in its status as a non-contributing property. The request proposes to add a small gable overhang to the shed roofed front porch that will extend approximately five feet from the porch to provide protection from rain when entering the porch. Materials for the proposed stoop will consist of open wood framing in the gable, six inch square columns matching the front porch, roofing shingles to match the roof of the house, and concrete footers under the, the columns. The existing concrete stairs will remain. The applicant notes that a purely cosmetic gable sat on the porch roof when the home was purchased 43 years ago, but was removed. And this is just a profile of the site plan submitted by the applicant shows building setbacks for the proposed overhang that comply with the city's land development code urban form standards. And this request was evaluated using the standards and guidelines referenced here. Dixieland Historic District exhibits a variety of architectural styles, including Craftsman Mugolo, Mediterranean Revival, Minimal Traditional, and Frame and Masonry Vernacular. Entrance features for houses in this area are guided typically by the uh, style and size of a house, and both minimal stoops and modest porches exist. While additions to, front, to the front of a contributing house are typically not recommended by the design guidelines, given the non-contributing status of the subject house, the small footprint and simple design of the proposed overhang, compatible materials, as well as reversibility of this, this alteration without damaging historic building material, staff finds the proposed overhang to meet the intent of the standards and guidelines. Further justification is the previous existence of a gable feature on the shed roof of the front porch. The design submitted by the applicant is conceptual and does not provide construction details. However, because this is a minor exterior uh, alteration to a non-contributing house, staff is comfortable recommending approval of this request as an additional staff level historical review will be required at the time of building permit application. So therefore staff recommends final approval of the request. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the applicant here today? No, but I'm in for her Okay. Uh, do you have anything to say in regard to it? No. Okay. Well, is there any public comment for support or opposition? Boy, this is going to go quick and easy. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions regarding the request? Emily, did I hear you say there'd be a, a, an additional review at some point <clears throat> in the future? A uh, staff review will also take place at time of building permit application. Mm -hmm. I do have a question about that. Can you, um, Can you stand to the that? mic, though, and, and uh, uh, give us your, your name and your name address. address for the record? Anyway, yeah. um, what, why, is it, why is that necessary to have another review to see the final drawings and stuff to make sure that they actually Correct. meet her proposal? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other any questions by the committee? Okay, we're going to end the public uh, portion of the questioning and move to the um, committee portion of discussion. Is there any further committee discussion? Move for approval of staff, rec per staff recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, and we are going to a uh, roll call. Myself, approve. Then Melinda Ringer. Chris Olson? Approve. Lynn Dennis? Approve. Landis <coughs> Fleming? Four. Natalie Oldenkamp? Approve. Cesar Perez? Approve. Michael Porter? Four. Okay, and it is approved. Thank you very much. Boy, today's going to go quickly. Our next case is HPB 23-093, 345 Cannon Street. 
Final approval is requested for the construction of a building addition onto the rear elevation of the house on, on the subject property. The owners are Colin and Kelsey Thomas, applicant Derek Morton, Morton Builders, Inc. Are there any conflicts of interest among the committee members? Okay. Emily, would you read the staff report and recommendation then, please? Thank you. Thank you. The subject property is an interior lot consisting of 0.26 acres. And on this property is a one-story, single-family, masonry vernacular house built circa 1955 in the ranch architectural style, which is a non-contributing building in the Dixieland Historic District. The ranch styling of this house is expressed by a low-pitched hip roof, brick veneer siding over concrete block, integrated uh, front stoop, attached carport with breeze block, knee wall, and decorative shutters. <clears throat> Excuse me. Decorative shutters at the front windows only. And this slide showing some more photos of the um, exterior elevations of the home. Applicant's request pr proposes to construct an addition me measuring 17 feet by 13 feet for a total of 221 square feet onto the rear elevation of the home. The addition will consist of a master bathroom, laundry area, and closet. And again, this is um, elevation drawings that were provided by the applicant. So uh, a rendering showing the proposed addition. Design and materials for the addition are intended to match the existing house and include a concrete block stem wall tied into existing concrete slab, uh, matching the ele elevation of the home. Cladding will consist of painted stucco brick over concrete block walls. Uh, vinyl single hung windows, shingles to match the existing roofing, and a, an aluminum fascia and vinyl soffit to match the existing. And the site plan for the proposed addition shows building setbacks that comply with the urban form standards in the Land Devel Development Code. This request was evaluated using the standards and guidelines referenced here. In, in evaluating the request with the standards, staff finds that the, the requested addition does not disturb the spatial relationships that characterize the neighborhood and the essential form and integrity of the subject house is maintained. In evaluating the request with the design guidelines, the materials of the proposed addition reflect the original materials of the house and are compatible with the guidelines. The design of the proposed addition's windows, cladding, enclosed soffit, and roof pitch and form is consistent with the ranch style of the subject house and design guidelines. Furthermore, the addition is appropriately placed on the rear elevation of the home. And finally, the building setbacks for the new addition meet the requirements of the Land Development Code's urban form standards. So staff does recommend fi uh, final approval of the request as submitted. Thank you. Is the applicant here today? And did you want to say anything uh, in support of this? Yes, please. Uh, good morning. I'm Derek Morton. I'm the uh, general contractor for Kelsey Mo um, Thomas. And uh, they purchased this home about two and a half years ago during COVID. And uh, they, they were recently married. And a lot of it is a nice starter home. And uh, Kelsey is expecting their first out in October, they decided they really need an extra <laughs> So I would just uh, like to thank you for your consideration, and we uh, would like to be able to do this project. Thank you. And is there any uh, public comment otherwise? Okay. And we asked for conflict of interest among the committee already, right? Okay, I was thinking I had, but wanted to verify. Uh, let's see. Are there, um, sorry, <laughs> you know, trying to move the glasses that way that, that I don't have anymore. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, are there any committee member, uh, we're going to close out the public portion and move to the committee. Is there any, uh, committee, um, conversation on this questions, et cetera? 
Okay. For approval. Per Second. Okay, let's call for a roll call. Myself, approved. Chris Olson. Approved. Lynn Dennis. Approved. Landis Fleming. Four. Natalie Oldenkamp. Approved. Cesar Perez. Four. Michael Porter. Four. And it is approved. Thank you very much. Boy, it's really going easy today. Our next case is HPB 23 96 221 East Main Street. Final approval is requested for the installation of new exterior signage on the Dean Bryant building located on the subject property. The owner is Cruise Banking Corporation, applicant SignCore Inc. <laughs> Are there any conflicts of interest among the committee members? Seeing none, uh, Emily, would you read the staff report and recommendations? Thank you, Madam Chair. The subject property is located at the southwest corner of South Kentucky Avenue and East Main Street and consists of two lots of record with a total area of 0.21 acres. On the property is a two-story commercial building built circa 1912, which is a contributing structure in the Munn Park Historic District. Known as the Dean Bryant Building, it is a two-part commercial structure with Mediterranean Revival architectural elements expressed in its brick cladding, horizontal brick banding, and wood canopy covered in terracotta barrel tiles and supported by paired knee brackets. This request is part of an overall signage package for the rebranding of Wachula State Bank to Cruz State Bank, which occupies most of the ground floor of the Dean Bryant Building. Additionally, the small non-lighted projecting sign for the ATM will be given new faces and vinyl lettering will be applied to the front, uh, north facing front doors. While staff is able to approve the projecting ATM directional sign, the applicant is including it in this request for efficiency. The vinyl lettering does not require a certificate of review um, or a sign permit. Current Current request seeks uh, approval for the installation of the following exterior signs. One internally illuminated projecting sign ins installed on the building's northeast corner facing the intersection of East Main Street and South Kentucky Avenue. Uh, the projecting sign is a four-sided cuboid structure with copy reading Lakeland and is topped with a round meal fashioned after Cruise State Bank's logo. This sign is comprised of aluminum framing, flat aluminum panels, and push-through letters. The aluminum, aluminum panels on the four sides of the assembly will have routed openings with dimensional acrylic letters pushed through the flat panels, which will be backlit with white LED lighting. Aluminum is an opaque material, and as such, the blue flat panels will not emit light. The overall height of the sign is six feet and projects approximately 15 inches from the corner of the building. The sign's predominant message promotes Lakeland and comprises 2.8 square feet per panel. Uh, the finial has an area of 1.4 square feet per side. This sign has a clearance dimension of 9.5 feet from the sidewalk to the bottom of the sign. Secondly, one wall sign is also proposed, uh, and it's uh, proposed to be externally illuminated by an existing light fixture. The sign will be installed on the north building elevation facing Main Street. The overall square footage of the sign is 27.8 square feet in overall area. And the wall sign consists of aluminum reverse channel letters pin mounted with one inch standoffs. And finally, the third uh, proposed sign is another projecting sign not illuminated on the north building elevation facing Main Street to replace the existing projecting ATM sign. This sign is, um, this sign will be fabricated aluminum and will be directional with a quarter inch acrylic copy applied to the face um, and will be attached with a custom painted aluminum bracket. This projecting sign is 22 inches by 33 inches for a total area of five square feet. And this request was evaluated using the standards and guidelines referenced here. The proposed signage is similar in scale and design to the Wachula State Bank signage approved by the Design Review Committee in 2021. Staff finds that the proposed new signage for Cruise State Bank complies with the sign guidelines in terms of design, materials, projection dimension, size, and clearance dimension. 
Internal illumination of the projecting sign and external illumination of the wall sign are also found to meet the intent of the sign guidelines. So therefore, staff does recommend final approval of the request as submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Is the uh, applicant here to speak to the uh, project? Please state your name and address for the record. Sure. My name is Oren Dowdy. Um, I represent Cruise Bank. I own Sign Corp. located at 512 6th Street Northwest, Winter Haven. Um, thank you, Emily. Appreciate that. Um, so the comment I have on uh, everything looks to be in order in the drawings. The one thing you did say was the projection of the of the corner sign. If we mm -hmm. could bring that back up. Um, and it's got the dimensions, uh, and I can barely see that. I think it's uh, 16, 16 inches of the actual cube itself. Um, but the projection is going to actually be further from the building because it's going to be mounted on standoffs. Um, so it's going to be proportional to what you see here in the illustrations. Uh, so these are, you know, these illustrations are basically overlays to give everybody, including the client, an idea of what they're looking at and what we're proposing. Um, once we do final shop drawings, I mean, the size of the sign is exactly what you see it, but the projection is going to be based on the engineering. Um, probably if you measure from corner to corner, it might be 30 inches, give or take. So it'll be proportional, though, to what you're looking at. Okay. And is there any public comment for support or opposition? I actually do have a question. You say 30 inches, and that's where to where and which part? <laughs> well, it would be from, you know, remember, this is going to be engineered. So, um, you know, for wind loads and, and to meet code. And so we've given you the dimensions of the sign, and then what we call, I would say, the finial or the logo on the top. Now, the client, uh, and speaking of that, has asked us if we could do the logo in a spherical manner rather than something flat. Uh, I'm not sure that we can, so I told them I would explore that. But from an aesthetic standpoint, is pretty much what you're looking at there. It would just be a little bit more dimensional as far as the finial is concerned. But back to your question, uh, you know, if we were if we were to mount here on the corner, and you have 16 by 16, and then you have three-inch aluminum posts coming out, two or three of them to structurally hold it from this corner to the outside corner of the sign, is what I was talking about. Okay. Yeah. So it'd be it'll be proportional. I mean, it's you know. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that clarification. Uh huh. Okay. And any other? Um, Public comment. We are um, <coughs> sorry. May I? Yes. Um, so back to the finial. You know, we 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 presented this to the client, and they don't know whether they want it to be round or whether they want it to be square with their logo on the top. And then they again they asked me if I could make it three dimensional, which again I don't know that we can, but I want that brought up here at the meeting in case it's been changed and you know we don't have to do another major review I want to get some feedback from the committee on that what their thoughts are okay. Does the committee have any questions I don't uh, I don't think ahead. it has a major impact on whether it's approved or not okay I think it's still appropriate regardless of whether it's 3D or not. It's a finial on top. I mean, to me, it almost makes me think of like the old school kind of barber shop kind of thing that might spin a little on the top. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not that unusual, but so I, I don't particularly have any objections to it. It seems fairly normal. <laughs> um, so. Well, we may make it a bit thicker. I mean, if it's going to be illuminated, it may be that it's too close to the LEDs. We may make that actually thicker. I'm not sure that we can give it a a convex uh, uh, shape, you know, or a spherical shape. Uh, I think we just make it a little bit thicker and illuminate it, and that's probably what's going to happen. Um, you know, cost constraints come into play there too. So, and you think thicker by how much versus what dimensions we have now? Well, we didn't call it out there for that very reason, but um, you know, the minimum 
that those letters, those push through letters need to be from the LEDs is three inches. So you're probably looking at something on that drawing that's probably three to four inches thick and we would probably take it to five to six inches thick. Okay. Yeah, otherwise you'll see the LEDs. If they become too close to the acrylic, they, they'll have hot spots. It'll, yeah. be, it'll be bright and dim, bright and dim. So there's gotta be an appropriate depth. Any other committee questions? We're going to end the public comment portion and uh, start the committee uh, discussion. Any other discussion from the committee? I move that we accept it as is proposed subject to the code uh, review by the permitting department. Second. Is that subject to Emily's um, recommendations or Emily's recommendations plus the potential that he was talking about, about a little bit larger dimensions, and how does that play into it? Yeah, so it's not really necessary to add that condition um, because that will be re a requirement that the sign meet all regulations in the Land Development Code regardless. Okay. So, yeah. So per <clears throat> staff recommendations. Yes. Okay. And do you have a question? I just wanted to ask our architects on the board here of their thoughts. I mean, I'm looking at 16 plus another six, I don't know, 22, 23 inches off the building. <clears throat> another seven inches isn't that much further, but I mean, it sounds to me like it could protrude quite a bit out over the... Is that, well, you can kind of see in the east elevation that they have on there from Kentucky, mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot less than the existing overhang that's over their entrance. Okay. So I'm not particularly bothered by that. And I think that before they actually did the renovations over there, they actually had overhangs on the Kentucky Avenue side. They were also pretty deep. So I don't think it's protruding too much. It's certainly no more than the existing <laughs> overhangs that are already there, um, which are not particularly historic either. They're they're bolted on type of aluminum construction. So yes. I don't see it being super incompatible for, for that reason or anything. So. Thank you. And I would just add too that the sign guidelines allow up to 42 inches of a projection. And what's the height of the bottom most projection of of the the clearance height? Yeah. I believe it, says it was eight one. Eight one there. Okay. okay. Which is very typical. Okay. So it should be okay. Yeah, because that would be that yeah. above a door, and your your minimum is always you don't want to have a head knocker for ADA concerns, Eight. but okay. it is is the minimum that they could do. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, any other discussion? Okay, let's vote by roll call. Melinda Rinker for the uh, proposal. Chris Olson. Four. Lynn Dennis. Four. Landis Fleming. Four. Natalie Oldenkamp. Four. Cesar Perez. Four. Michael Porter. Four. And there you are. It has been approved. Y'all are making this really simple today. Our next case is HPB 23-098, 1518 South Dakota Avenue. Final approval is requested for the construction of a building addition onto the rear elevation of the house on the subject property. Owner applicant is Mark and Laura Serio. Are there any conflicts of interest among the committee members? Okay, seeing none. Um, Emily, would you read the staff report and recommendations, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Subject property is an interior lot consisting of 0.18 acres. And on this property is a one-story single-family masonry vernacular house built in 2000 in a modern masonry vernacular style, which is a non-contributing building in the Dixieland Historic District. The house has a gable on hip roof with typical roofing shingles along with a vinyl soffit and fascia. The exterior walls of the house are painted concrete block uh, textured stucco and applied coins exist on the front elevation and uh, gables only. T111 vertical siding it exists on the rear gable. <clears throat> the applicant's request proposes to construct an addition measuring 10 feet by 20 feet for a total of 200 square feet onto the rear elevation of the home. The addition will consist of an additional bedroom and bathroom. 
The design and materials for the addition are intended to match the existing house and include a concrete slab tied into the existing foundation, painted concrete block walls, vinyl single hung windows, a metal nine light door, asphalt shingles to match the existing roofing, and T111 vertical siding in the gable, um, and also vinyl uh, fascia and soffit to match the existing. And the site plan for the uh, proposed addition shows building setbacks that comply with the urban form standards in the land development code. This request was evaluated using the standards and guidelines referenced here. In evaluating the request with the standards, staff finds the requested addition does not disturb the spatial relationships that characterize the neighborhood and the essential form and, and integrity of the subject house is maintained. In evaluating the request with the design guidelines, the materials of the proposed addition reflect the materials of the existing house and meet the intent of the design guidelines. The design of the proposed addition's windows, door, cladding, enclosed soffit, and roof pitch and form is consistent with the modern masonry vernacular style of the subject house. Furthermore, the addition is appropriately placed on the rear elevation of the home. And finally, uh, the building setbacks for the new addition were found to meet the requirements of the Land Development Code's urban form standards. Therefore, staff recommends final approval of the re request as submitted. Okay, is the applicant here today? And would you like to say anything in support of the project? Please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Mark Sirio. I live at 1518 South Dakota Avenue. Uh, this addition is for my sister-in-law. So my wife and I live in the home with our two uh, handicapped adult children. Uh, her sister lives with us as well, and we need the extra room. So this is to get her out of her hair, <laughs> so to speak. Um, that was yeah, on and to record. give her her own living area, and it would make a lot. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier for us. So we're really looking forward to it. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Is there any public comment? Okay. Is there any committee member uh, questions for the applicant? With that, we're going to end the public uh, comment portion and uh, ask the committee to discuss anything in regard to the project. Seeing nothing, anybody for a motion? Here for approval as per staff recommendation. Second. Okay, we're going to, any other questions or discussion? Okay, vote by roll call. Melinda Rinker, four. Chris Olson. Four. Lynn Dennis. Four. Landis Fleming. Four. Natalie Oldenkamp. Four. Cesar Perez. Four. Michael Porter. Four. And you are approved. Is, I believe there is no other business. Um, anything else? And um, motion to adjourn, anybody? I'll move to adjourn. I'll okay. second. Wow, all, all, uh, all in favor here? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> I think that was a new record. For I, I was going to say, wow. Like.